me. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Skill Builder. I'm Robin Clevitt. And I'm Roger Bisbee. And we're going to be looking at the Maffel MT55 Cordless. This is our review. So we've come unplugged on this one. We certainly have. Let's have a look what's in this box. Okay. This is a sustainer box, as all the Maffel is. And we have... You don't get that, by the way. That's something you don't... We oh, have yes, you do. the MT55, which looks very similar to the corded version. However... We're cordless, we have yeah. a battery. Right, there we go. first thing I'm gonna to say to you is, you always take the battery out when you're playing around with the saw, yeah? Because obviously, good practice. You know whether it's plugged in, but with this, you don't wanna accidentally start it off. So, first thing, Robin, what's the first thing you know about this? It's very similar, so if you've watched our previous review of the corded, you'll yeah. know a lot of these features already, but just run us through it. Okay, so we have a couple of uh, unique features with this particular saw. I'll start with blade change, but not, and that's not the most important thing, but obviously blade change is really quite quick on this saw. You, you press in the button on the side, you pull up, and then the door is open. It enables you to get to the blade. You can see all the way around the blade. So that's a really nice feature. Also, with this, if you look at the side of this, you can't see where you'd normally undo your blade from other track saws. What you've got here is the fact that this is completely enclosed, so it's quite safe. You can hold your hand there, you know, you can do all kinds of things. The air is being extracted a lot more efficiently from this particular saw, right down to the fact that you've got a beautiful little gasket there, similar to what you'd have in an engine and it's keeping all of that air sucking that dust out into your extractor or into the bag, which is over here. Why is that a beautiful gasket? Why isn't that just an ordinary gasket? Well, I mean, if you've got two metal surfaces to going together, it's gonna to be a little gap there, but with that gasket, you know, as you squeeze it together, you can kind of feel it compressing. Oh, you love gaskets. I like that. I just think that that's, you know, if you're gonna spend Let me have a feel. top dollar on a tool, you need this sort of, you need to have the benefit of it. And even with a bag, which isn't being, which isn't drawing out the dust, it's still gonna do a pretty good job. So we'll give it a go. We'll, go, right. we'll, we'll see how good that dust, the, we can, we can source some stuff and see how much yeah. we collect on that. What, what's this all about? Why have we got? I would imagine, I would imagine that there must be a, a reason for that. I mean, I don't know whether you knock that out and plug a vacuum on it, but then that seems to defeat the object. Straight in and out, you mean? Blow suck. That goes that's, into there. Yeah, that's into Is there. That, I think we might have to find out. I yeah. need to investigate that one. Okay. Okay, so we've got a scribe setting on this. Yeah, yeah. so with the Maffel saws, the M, uh, MT55s, you set your depth. So whether you're using your rail or you're going with the fence, for example, on top of the material, you've got this really handy small sort of device here, which basically allows you to when you're on the rail, you have it in this up setting. And what that means is you don't have to allow for the thickness of the rail, which is in this case, seven mil. So what you do, I'm working on top of the board. I flick that round and that's the exact depth of cut. When I'm on the rail, I flick it round and that allows for the rail, which is really quite neat. Also, I like to put a scribe in, and we talked about this before. The reason for that is you don't, you know, you want to make sure you put the best cut through a veneered board or even an, even a standard sheet of MDF. So how we do that with the Maffel, I'm using an 18 mil board. I basically set this to um, probably 19 or 20 because I'm cutting into a sacrificial sheet underneath. Um, Roger, can you just do that? I can't get it from my side. Just set that up to, there you go, 20 mil. Oh no, you want it 18. There you go. So you set your depth, but I want to put a scribe cut through first. On this machine, I'll just turn it around. I'll take it off the rail, I'll turn it around. There's a small little switch there, one click. And what that's doing now is that's enabling the blade to just go in three millimeters, all right? So you're just gonna go in three millimeters. I'm on the rail setting, that's why it looks a little bit more than three millimeters. And that's great, so you pass the, through the material, you get a really nice, clean, crisp cut. And then you do your final cut, you flick the switch back off and you do your full pass. So what this saw is doing on that second pass, 
all the way through, it's moving the blade away from that cut by one tenth. Is it a one tenth, one -tenth of a millimetre? One tenth of a millimetre. Um, and that means you're definitely not going to split or chip the surface. So that's quite a nice feature too. We've also got a little indicator here, which moves out, excuse me, if I've got that in the right position. I'll point to it. Well, moves out to show where the cutting line is. A small thing, if you're on the bevel, obviously your cutting line is changing because your blade is basically moving out. And yeah. it's gonna be direct. There's your adjustment to lock you in your bevel position. So that's the rod that goes through the back. And it means that instead of having to do up a knob at the front and the back, you just do up one and it locks it in position. So very easy to use. This is a brushless motor on this cordless version. What they have done, this battery, if you dip into there, there's also another battery. There's another battery there. So spot the difference between these two batteries if you can, yeah? You'll find that one of them is a Metabo. So the reason they fit this machine is because they're actually part of the cordless alliance system, which we talked about recently on Skill Builder, which means that you've got eight different German manufacturers all sharing the same battery platform. So it means you can swap around if you've got Metabo machines and you've got this high capacity. I guess it's some advantage if that's the system you're into and it means you're not necessarily stuck trying to find a Mayfell battery. Maybe there's even a price difference, I don't know. So there you are. We're gonna run that outside, save the dust. I know you've got dust extraction, but there's always a little bit of dust kicked up and uh, our cameraman doesn't like it. So we'll take that outside. One thing I would say about this, by the way, it doesn't have a variable speed. It's all or nothing. Having said that, not a fantastically high revving machine anyway, so the burning issue shouldn't be too much of a problem there. But all those features are similar to the, to the cording machine. You've got this insert here. If you take that out, you can fit it onto your Festool rails or anybody else's, not Makita's, you can fit it onto. You can't fit it onto the wall because they've got a completely different system. So you're not stuck. If you've got a few rails and you want to change over to this saw, then it is possible. Have I missed anything? Um, I think I think we just need to um, say this is one of the most expensive saws on the market. You probably know that. Terribly well built, terribly well engineered. And as I said before, this is probably a saw for life. Whether, you know, it'll wear out a lot less quick than you will. Mm, okay, well, you're selling it to me, as you intend to do, I guess. Um, but the batteries won't last for life, will they? No, but I'm just hoping, I'm a strong believer in the technology is coming on and on and on. And what we see here now is lumpy and it's heavy and I'm sure that in the future they'll have something which so, is... So this is heavier than the corded machine, isn't it? Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah, and it I think is, it's yeah. good because you've yeah. got the battery element. Now, are you a corded or are you a cordless man? I mean, I, what do you prefer? Well, I do have a corded one and I bought the Festool years and years ago and I've looked after it. It's still going strong, so I don't really need to change it. But when you see the benefit of cordless, recently I pitched a roof using a cordless circular saw for the first time. I'm always usually using a corded one. And I thought I couldn't have done that 10 years ago. So yeah. it's the way to go, I think. Did you get the whole roof pitched on one oh, charge or not? The whole roof pitched on, a, on two batteries. Two batteries. Yeah. And um, it wasn't massive, but it was a good day and a half's work. Do you know what the great thing is? I mean, I've talked about this before, but the great thing is now, the future, if you like, and it really is, I mean, DeWalt are doing it, so other people are gonna follow, is to have that adapter that you plug in and that changes it over to the mains. Yeah, and that would be a brilliant thing. But at the moment, I've got to say that if you look at the DeWalt one and you see that, the cost of that adapter means you could actually buy those two saws. So. Really? But everything starts out like that, doesn't it? Okay. Everything starts out like that and then it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, except our labor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna give that a go. We're gonna take it out on site and, uh, and see what we think. That's a good cut for a battery machine. 
I can go through pretty quickly, um, as quick as I can with a mains power machine, I would say. But you'd expect that because this is basically well, yeah, don't, don't sports forget. performance. Don't forget, my old friend, that we're only running 18 volts here. Mm. But the other ones were good, like, you know, the Makita's got mm. a 36 volt setup. Mm. Yeah, the, the Festool's got two 18 volt batteries. This is running on just one single 18 volt. Right, let me have a go. Okay because I will test it to destruction. Do you know what? There's a little bit more break out on that. Yeah, Push, think, pushing it, yeah, pushing it, push just it. shows you, doesn't it? And, that, that's, and that's all because in the uh, chip boards, you get a little bit of um, stuff comes up with the blade as well. Yeah. So it gets dug and it gets dug out and it drags out okay. a big hole. That's why that yeah. score cut is really important to start with. If you was doing it, if you were doing, you know, for a real, yeah. basically. Do you know what? Because it's you find that with chip board though, you get a little bit of that inside and it gets taken out like a chisel, boom, and it just breaks out the top. Because it's got a score cut setting on it. Yeah, you're gonna give it a go. Let's give it a go. Because you're, yeah, you're not fully on, you've missed, yeah, yeah. you're only 50 percent of it. That's all right. Yeah, I understand. It's getting a bit. The, the, the workpiece is getting a bit thin. You want to get another bit? Yeah, yeah. Get. We got another bit over there. Next pass is your full pass. Yeah, that's right. I mean that is a crystal clear. And there's cut. nothing on that one. That's, I mean that's basically what you're paying for. Isn't that's it? as near a glue joint as anything. Yeah, that's really. That nice. was a schoolboy error looking yeah, at. Well, that. let's put these two it. together. Let's put these two together and yeah. sort of, you know, yeah. I can press that up to there. And being that this is actually a rough side because that's got yeah. a splinter guard against it. But look at that. I mean, there's not a lot in it, is there? You can push right. that up. Well, stick it all the way up there where it belongs. See where the. Oh, the match. Now you're thinking. Now you're talking, Roger. Because it's parallel, it's not, it's tapered, isn't it? We didn't measure that. That's a quite a nice joint though. It's all right, so if you cocked up, you cut a bit wrong by mistake, just glue it back together, <laughs> smudge it. You know, did you ever use that filler that you get? No, I haven't. No. Never needed to. All the time, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I always reckon the secret of good carpentry. Good filler. Good filler. No. Nah. Uh, the secret of good decorating. Good filler. When I was at carpentry college, when doing my uh, carpentry and joinery, one of the things that you never, ever, ever saw was glass paper or sandpaper. And our lecturers said, we don't use it. We right. use sharp tools and that's what we get our finish with. Yeah. The painters will use a bit of sandpaper yeah. in between coats. So I've got to say, I didn't have a lot of faith in cordless tools of this sort. I thought maybe plunge saws, skill saws, that kind of thing, a little bit too much for a battery. But actually, considering this is on 18 volts, pretty impressive. I am sold again on this and it's only 18 volts. I mean, as I say, the rest of them, 36 or whatever. Good, very good. I yeah, don't know how they do it. I particularly like it because it's got one battery so you save a bit of weight there. It feels much more like the weight of a corded machine. Um, also, the battery's just in a sleeker position. Some of them have got two batteries, one over, one under, and I think that just loses a bit of um, vision for me. You know, you like to see the rail in front of you. Yeah, it's a good, an excellent bit of kit. There's no doubt about that. So that's it, that's our review of the Maffel MT55. That was an interesting little tool to use. I quite like that a lot, actually. I yeah, like it's a, a good bit of kit. I just wish I could afford it. <laughs> Never mind, onwards and upwards, as I say. I'm Roger Bisby. I'm Robin Clever. Don't forget to come back and see us soon because we have a lot more coming up on Skill Builder in the near future. And if you're not a subscriber, if you become a subscriber, we'd love you even more. And there's a little bell that you can press. And when you press that bell up in the top corner there, that will give you an automatic notification of all the videos that we've got coming up. Robin's also got a lot of projects, a lot of things, and check out his channel as well. Don't forget guys, this model is also going to be appearing in the mega showdown of track saws, which we're going to bring you as a conclusion of these videos. 
What do you want to like a selfie? Yeah, yeah, let's get a selfie. This is Roger. Oh, this is, do you know what? This that's is what, That's what I really hate is when people do that. It's like going. Paul McCartney does that. If he's, he's up like with Paul, oh, yeah, he does actually. Paul Simon, he'll either be doing that or he's going he's like really... that, going, don't look at me, chaps. I know I'm the famous one, but have a look at this minor celebrity. Well, I did, I, I, no, I did meet him on my 40th birthday just yeah, by chance, yeah. just walking through a door and he was coming the other way and I was like, well, he opened the door for me. Actually, he was really a nice individual yeah. and he was completely natural and down to earth. Like I didn't like he was anybody like really. a human i being. liked him yeah like it was a, a really nice so that was it so you your door opening experience and he sang happy birthday to me oh uh, yeah well they all do that he, he does that? that he did yesterday for me no word he of said he looked like a yesterday man how about that did he really yep seriously absolutely you have to pay him no he just did it off the cuff what like he knew all the words and everything he knew the words he just <laughs> didn't know my name he just 